Can you describe how a concept is formulated, turned into propaganda, and then ends up on someone's bumper sticker or in a newspaper? What's the step-by-step -step process? The other thing is, how close is the Politburo to the actual propaganda creating process? Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, the 007 incident was uh, notable in the fact that it took a long time before the Soviets responded to it, and then the military took the lead in terms of explaining what had happened rather than the uh, political organs. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know why that actually happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the propaganda concepts are not being developed. They, they have been developed long time ago. There's nothing basically new in the concept of, of overall propaganda uh, methods and goals. The ultimate goal, however ridiculous it may sound, or primitive or simplistic, is the world domination. Many, uh, uh, many experts in foreign policy would ridicule my opinion, but this is what it is. I saw it with my own eyes. I was a part of that. So, and my father was, I think I mentioned that before, he was an inspector of land forces. He traveled all over the world where the Soviet troops were stationed. So he knows perfectly well that the troops are not stationed there to collect harvest for Cubans or, or to help Afghanis to, to uh, develop the, uh, what the hordes of cattle or goats. They are there for one purpose, world domination. The concepts, the immediate issues or problems are created, of course, for propaganda purposes, and they end up at, as a bumper s stickers, probably not uh, long, uh, it takes really short period of time. Unlike some other things in, in the Soviet system, uh, propaganda takes, propaganda is one of the things that they don't save money on. And um, there is a, a huge apparatus of propaganda experts in USSR. Novosti Press Agency is just one of them, one of the organizations. But apart from them, that there is a Department of Agitation and Propaganda with this, within the Central Committee. There are faceless people, names of whom you will never learn. Uh, they are kind of classified. Uh, I didn't explain you the methods today because it will take us another day. The methods include such thing as semantic manipulation. The words and expressions are being coined at the rate of five expressions a minute by extremely clever, educated experts. And the media outside of USSR obediently repeats this cliché. I give you just several examples, not, not to take your time, not to bore you to death. Okay, I mentioned one thing. United Nations. The expression was invented by the Soviet propaganda experts, not by Americans. We know perfectly well it's not united and it has nothing to do with nations. More than half of the delegations in the UN do not represent any nation at all. Uh, they are disunited, obviously. Uh, the United Nations had not been able to solve a single military conflict. Nowhere in the world uh, they provoked war, yes, they took part in wars, but they didn't prevent expansion of communism or, or they did not prevent a single war anywhere. So the true expression, the true term for United Nations could be disunited bureaucracies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another cliche which was coined in Moscow by experts of propaganda. National Liberation Movement. It's not national because most of the leaders do, do not necessarily belong to the ethnic group which they lead, number one. Number two, they are unpatriotic and unnationalistic because they, they obey orders from a foreign country, USSR. Okay? They are trained in USSR, they are paid by the Soviet system, and they, they work in the interests of the Soviet system. Liberation. Whom they are liberating? Who is being liberated? And movement. Movement, we understand, is something which moves, unlike uh, something which is static. National liberation does not move. It's a war. If, if, you, if you call war a movement, probably. But it, it has nothing to do with uh, the concept of movement in, in American terminology. It means a legitimate, overt, organized, voluntary uh, movement. Right? I presume your, your 
church or your organization is voluntary. Nobody keeps you here by force. Okay, National Liberation Movement is an army of bandits, professional bandits, which are kept, kept in, within the framework of the movement by force. If they betray, it's like in mafia, they're going to be executed. Okay, another example <coughs> of semantic manipulation is, uh, mm, okay, mm, free medical aid, for example. You think it's, it's an American democratic expression. No way. The, this, the, the term was coined by, by the communists a long time ago at the time of Comintern. There's nothing free in this world. Everybody knows it. Least of all medical aid. It's a very expensive thing to render medical assistance to other people. To Somebody sometime, somewhere has to pay for it. Who? Taxpayer. Okay? Obviously. There are many other things that are being coined by, by the Soviet propaganda apparatus. Unfortunately, see, if, if I call myself a genius, a genius writer, for example, Los Angeles Times would not call me that, right? They will call me a strange, crazy Russian who calls himself a genius. Then why the hell they call liberation movements uh, liber what, what, what they call themselves? Just because they are men? See? The logic is twisted. Um, the stickers on, on, on the bumpers, I don't know. It, it, it depends on the uh, ability of local forces to, to uh, tow, up the, uh, tow the foreign policy. How close is Politburo to, to implementation of propaganda actions? Very distant. See, Politburo is a group of self-imposed dictators. They don't really decide anything. The only uh, objective of their existence and their life and their struggle is to stay in power. Unlike American politician who has two objectives. First, to be elected, and second, to be re-elected. <laughs> the, so the, so the Soviet politician doesn't have the first objective. He does not have to be elected. He just makes his way in the party structure all the way up. The election doesn't bother him at all. So the only purpose of his life is to stay where he is and don't rock the boat. They don't make decisions. The decision-making level are the faceless group of experts, as I, as I tried to explain to you. And they, the, the Politburo gives only the basic directions, what to be done, and the obedient servants of the highest caliber, intellectuals, are dutifully developing these things. Um, some independently thinking progressive academics in the United States think that come socialism they will be able to preserve their integrity and independence. It's wishful thinking. They will become obedient servants of the system that they are trying to force upon you.